In my last video, we looked into the details of tetramesh creation using hypermesh. In this video, we will try to create a perfect hex mesh with zero defects on the same component. The link for the CAD model is provided in the description. The procedure to create a hex mesh is a bit difficult and time consuming, but don't worry. Today I will let you in on a simple step by step process to create a hex mesh. By using this process, we can easily mesh any component using hypermesh. So watch till the end. Let's get into it. Let's start by deleting all the solids. Working with a surface geometry is much easier for geometry editing and simplification. As we are using a symmetric component, we will also delete half of the surfaces. We will create our mesh on the remaining half section and use the reflect tool to recreate the whole component. This will greatly reduce the total time required for meshing. We will use the solid map tool from 3D panel to create this hex mesh. This is a fairly simple process. I like to divide it into four main requirements. The first requirement is 2D elements or faces to be dragged. When we talk about hex mesh, we are essentially dragging two dimensional elements by specifying a proper thickness to transform them into three dimensional entities. For this, we need a 2D mesh or we can extract faces of existing three dimensional elements. The second requirement is a proper destination geometry. We are dragging the 2D elements from a source geometry to a destination geometry. Therefore, we need to define a proper destination geometry which is usually a surface. The third requirement is a path, a mesh path. To capture all the geometric features accurately, we need to define a specific path for the solid mapping process. For this, we can use adjacent lines, surfaces, or even adjacent element faces and nodes. The fourth and the last requirement is mesh size or density. By adjusting this setting properly, we can actually define the number of hex elements being generated by using the solid map tool. We have to use our geometry editing skills in the best way possible to satisfy these four requirements. As we start with the actual meshing of our component, you will get a better understanding of these requirements. To simplify the meshing process, we will split our component into different sections and work on these sections individually to create the solid map. Let's take a look at how this can be done. As I said before, let's split our geometry into smaller regions. We will use the quick edit panel to do this. There are several methods to split surfaces into smaller sections. The main objective is to simplify our meshing process. Now, as per the first requirement for solid mapping, we need to have 2D elements. Let's create a 2D mesh on this surface. To learn about the details of 2D meshing, watch my 2D mesh optimization tutorial which is dedicated to explaining the 2D meshing process using hypermesh. Let's eliminate the triad elements and optimize the mesh quality using the quality index tool. Now we are ready to start solid mapping. Open the solid map tab from 3D panel. We don't need a source surface. Select the 2D elements to be dragged. Use the by face selection option. Now set the parallel face as the destination geometry. There are several settings to specify the path. I suggest keeping it on mixed so that we can specify multiple settings at once. Select the perpendicular surfaces. Lastly, use the density setting to define the size of elements being created. As you can see, a hex mesh is now generated.
let's delete the surface mesh we created in the first step. Now we can move to the next section for solid mapping. We will extract the faces of these hex elements to specify the path while meshing the second section. Let's create 2D mesh on this surface. As we did in the previous section, optimize the element quality using the quality index tool. Select the elements to be dragged. Select proper destination geometry. This time, along with the path surfaces, we will also select the faces we extracted so that the new mesh matches with the previously created elements and there is proper connectivity. And we have correctly meshed the second section. The process to mesh every section is exactly the same. Extract faces, mesh a surface, optimize 2D mesh, select elements to drag, define path and adjacent faces, and specify the size or density. In fact, it starts to feel extremely monotonous as we go along from section to section. The key is to understand which surfaces to use for mapping. It is crucial to select the adjacent mesh faces when defining path to ensure proper node to node connectivity throughout our mesh. The regions we meshed till now were comparatively easy. Now for this cylindrical section, we have to make some drastic modifications to our geometry. We need to split and trim surfaces and also need to create some temporary surfaces to properly define the mesh path. This is the most crucial part of our meshing process. So watch closely. Let's split these curved surfaces to separate the region joining the previously created mesh. This will make it easier to mesh the cylindrical region. Now we need to trim some surfaces so that we can create temporary surfaces at specific locations. This internal surface needs to be split by surface edges. Let's create two temporary surfaces to define the path along which we will drag element faces. This is temporary and we can easily delete these extra surfaces after our mesh generation is done. Now we need to extract the faces of all these elements. We will map these faces on the trimmed internal surface. The path will be specified by the temporary surfaces we created. Let's use a density of 4. I would like to explain more about the density setting we are using for solid map. The density value is basically the number of layers of elements that will be created along the path. If we specify a smaller density value, larger size elements will be created and vice versa. 
On the other hand, using the size option instead of density gives a completely opposite result. Smaller the size value, smaller will be the elements. This may get confusing when you use solid mapping for the first time, but as you keep practicing on different models, you will definitely get a hang of it. Just remember the four requirements which I explained before. We need to use our geometry editing skills to modify our model in any way possible to satisfy those four requirements. All these modifications may or may not be temporary. The main objective is to capture the whole geometry with our mesh. It doesn't matter if you have to edit, create or even delete troublesome surfaces. What I am saying may seem unusual but it's true. We perform the simulation on the mesh and not on the geometry. The mesh is of highest importance. And with this, the hard part is over. Now we need to reflect all the elements along the cut plane so that we can make our half component whole again. For this, we will use the reflect tool from tools panel. Select all the elements and duplicate them in the original component. We need to reflect our mesh along the X axis. Select any node along the cut plane as the base point for reflection. Although the mesh looks connected, it is not. Open the edges panel by pressing Shift F3. Now preview equivalence and equivalence to join the nodes. At the start of this video, I said that we will try to create a perfect hex mesh with zero defects. Well, this is the moment of truth. Let's do a quick element quality check to find out. Go to element quality panel by pressing F10. With the radio button on 3D, click on any desired quality check. It is clear that all the elements in our model are passing every single quality criteria. The mesh is indeed perfect. And that's all for hex mesh creation using hypermesh. Smash that red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. If you have any doubts, feel free to comment below. If you like this video, please give a big thumbs up. It helps a lot. See you next time.